Big Mike and Hayes Entertainment here. This episode, we got a beauty. Canadian country star, Tay Bay. Great Canadian kid. You hit the subscribe button, you like what we're doing. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Tay Bay, and you're listening to the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. What song comes on, I want to take your hand and pull you close and move with you. Make some smoke Tore up and tight Got my eyes on you You can't help it You're Mel McDaniel's Approved Come on, let's get A little down I'm on down We're gonna dance all night The way you're wearing those sevens And girl, you look like a leather My hand in your back pocket I'm holding on so tight Go in a blue jean heavy A little down I'm on down Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. I only touch greatness podcast. Fast or slow, I want to feel your sway. I want to feel the beat, body on body, yeah. The way that you could sit in those low rides. My hands on your hips, girl, we fit just right. Come on, let's get a little denim on denim. Gonna dance all night The way you're wearing those sevens And girl, you look like a leather My hand in your back pocket I hope you are so tight I Only Touch Greatness Podcast With Ryan Hayes and Big Mike We are going live What's up, guys? Hey, man. How's it going, Timmy? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, man. Thanks for taking your time for us today. We really appreciate it. No worries at all, man. Thanks for having me. Just gonna ask you a bunch of questions about music. Hey, can we ask? Yeah, let's one... do it. Can we ask you one favor? Can we turn the camera the other way? Yeah, you want it horizontal? Yeah, or vertical. There you, there you go. go. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. All right. So uh, yeah, you started young, man. If I got my stats right, uh, you're like five years old, singing in churches. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's been a long road to get here, you know. It's uh, it's uh, it kind of started in my hometown of Peterborough, Ontario, and then um, eventually I moved to Nashville when I was fifteen. Um, so yeah, it's been uh, it's been a long road. What made you choose country music? You know, I've always just felt like that's where I needed to be as as a singer. You know, um, I, I probably have the most eclectic taste out of anybody. You know, I really do listen to everything. Um, I'm a firm believer that the best song, uh, a great song is a great song. Yeah. Um, but I just, you know, country music is, is just where my heart is, you know? Uh, you won the under 14, uh, open country singing contest two times. I mean, that's probably, uh, when you kind of knew you were going to go somewhere in music. What was your emotions, uh, at 15, uh, when you signed your development deal with a major Nashville record label and moved there, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at 15, I kind of packed up, and my dad um, left uh, left his job and, and moved to Nashville with me, and my brother and sister stayed uh, home in Canada. And, um, yeah, I've been in Nashville ever since. And then uh, after a couple of years, you came back and played some football, right? I did, yeah. Well, actually, what happened basically was that I would do the first semester of high school um, in Ontario – and yeah, I was pretty good at football. You know, I was pretty heavily recruited. I guess um, you know you would say I'm an all Canadian, which is you know like an all American. Um, and yeah, I was pretty heavily recruited to play Division One ball in the states. But I would play football in the uh, in the fall, and then come January, I'd be back in Nashville. Who influenced you as an artist growing up? Oh man, so many people. I mean, the first ever concert I went to was Garth Brooks in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, I've always been a massive Kenny Chesney fan uh, just because uh, we were signed to the same record company back in the day. And I got to hang out with Kenny a couple times and just to, just to see the way that he treated his band and crew and, and opening acts and basically like everybody, you know, he, he treated really, really well. Uh, in 2000, you were signed by BNA Records, correct? That's correct. And uh, you had one of the most legendary and best managers around in Bruce Allen. How was, yeah, it like working, how was it like working with that guy? Crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, he's uh, – Bruce is pretty legendary, you know. I mean, he's worked with everyone from Brian Adams to, to Michael Buble and 
and everybody in between. You know, he's uh, he's uh, he's a heavy hitter in the music business, and uh, he he you know what you see is what you get with Bruce. That's just the way he is. You know, he's a manager through and through, and and he wants what's best for his artists. He's probably not the easiest person to work with, but um, he gets stuff done. You know. In 2002 and 2003, your performance of We Shook Hands, Man to Man became a chartered country hit uh, in the States and in Canada. Uh, what was the feeling hearing your music across Canada and in the U.S.? It was cool. I mean, I think I was still, I was just too young to really understand what was going on. Um, when you're 19 years old and you're kind of thrust into this um, you know, machine of having a major record company and uh, a major record deal and being put on tour and all that stuff, I mean, it was... It was, it was just a crazy time in general. I remember there was actually a, um, a documentary being filmed on me for, uh, for CMT, which, um, you know, country music television. So, I mean, I had cameras following me everywhere. Um, felt like I was in making the band or something. Like, it was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then 2007, uh, you signed a worldwide co-publishing deal with uh, Old Media Management and moved to Nashville, right? Yeah, I mean, I kind of, after uh, things went south with my first record deal, I ended up moving back to, um, to Toronto and kind of, you know, I didn't want to work uh, a nine to five job. I still wanted to be in the music business, but I just lost my record deal. So I'm like, okay, how am I going to make this work? Well, I'm going to write songs for people. So that's kind of how it all came together. Um, my second win in the music business, you know, I, I, got, um, I got some placements up here in Canada and had a couple number one songs with various pop artists, people like Sean Desmond. Um, yeah. um, yeah, I ended up getting a new publishing deal and, and moving back to Nashville, I think, in 2007, 2008. Yeah, and uh, in your songwriting, you're currently signed to BMD. Uh, your songs have been recorded in, like, all different genres. This is quite unique. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, to me, it's not. But to, to a lot of people find it kind of interesting that I can, you know, write something for One Direction. And then, you know, on the other hand, you know, have a number one song with Justin Moore, who's like as country as it comes, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. I, me, it's not that weird because I, I, as I said earlier, I love all kinds of music. You know, I grew up on traditional country and, and voice to men and, and all these different things. So I don't know. It's not that big of a deal to me, but people find it fascinating. You write, I, you write for Flowrider too, right? Yeah. Fifth yeah. Harmony, Flowrider, Cher was pretty cool. Best thing. I understand so, yeah. all the talk that you're saying too. I used to run a record label as well. I was an A and R. I wasn't. I didn't do anything but intros for the song. I introduced kind of like who was coming on the song. So I understand yeah. all that behind the scenes stuff you're talking about. Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of hustle, you know. I mean, the older I get, the less I want to hustle. <laughs> yeah. Now get but, somebody else to do it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but it's just you know your priorities change a little bit, but. Um, yeah, I've been really lucky to, uh, to have written some songs that have gone number one and to have written, um, to worked with, you know, some pretty awesome artists. As a country artist, you, uh, had several hit singles in Canada. Your song, Somewhere in the Country, Till It's Gone, were top five radio hits in 2012, 2013. And then in 2014, uh, your cover of Avicii, Wake Me Up, reached number five on the Canadian country music radio airplay chart. That's a crazy fact. Yeah. I remember when we took that into the studio, you know, I was, I was surprised that no one had done it because it sounded so country anyways, just the bluegrass type of melodies, you know? And, um, it was, it was one of those things where, to be honest, a lot of people on my team just didn't, didn't get it. You know, they didn't think it would work. They're like, it's a cover. It's such a massive pop song. And I'm like, guys, just, just trust me on this one. Let me have this one. And if it's, if it's, if I fall on my face and I'll own it, you know, and, um, it was just, uh, it was such a big song for us and kind of really took my career to the next level or another rung up the ladder, I guess you would say at that point. And uh, yeah, me and the wife were huge fans. We went to your concert and Tim Hicks uh, out in Abbotsford. So I remember meeting you there as well. And you were always a beauty there. So that's why we wanted you on here. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, in March 2019, you launched your own label and management company in partnership with uh, your manager, Jill Schnell. Um, is that yeah. still going on? Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we have a partnership with Sony Music and The Orchard, and um, it's been great. You know, I, I'm, I'm really excited to kind of tackle this new, um, new venture. Um, I feel like it's something that I've prepared for for a long time, just being in the business as long as I have um, and, you know, starting as young as I did. 
and um, it's really great. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's really stressful. You know, to to run a label, but um, yeah. artists, well, as you know, <laughs> but working with uh, artists like Matt Lang and and then uh, you know, I'm pretty. It's pretty easy to work with myself, but uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what we had on. I had on uh, with a little flip a couple of weeks ago. He's a hip hop guy um, from Houston. He said the one part about recording that if he was recording himself in the studio on Pro Tools, you could pump out like six or seven songs in a day. But when you have the engineer there, that all slows you down. Yeah, I mean, everyone has a different process and stuff. Um, but. Uh... Yeah, it's just great, man. I really love having a label and, and hopefully trying to get it off the ground. I mean, Matt Lang, the first artist that we've got, is doing really great. And the singles, um, you know, in the top 30 now or top 20. So he's uh, he's cruising along. Are well, you, so are you, are you producing like anything in the stu in studio or what are, you, what are you doing in there other than just recording and writing songs? Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends on the project. Um, you know, I, usually I'm executive producing everything, which is basically what, you know, someone like Diddy did back in the day. I just basically over everything. Um, you know, and Danik from the band Emerson Drive, who's been with me since day one, he produces Matt as well. Um, so I literally just sit there with him and, and we kind of just do it together, even though I give him, you know, obviously give him the production credit. Um, I don't care about that. But, um, I just like to be involved. You know, I like to oversee things and yeah. Yeah. Hands, hands on learning and going through every song. They're your songs. You better be hands on. Absolutely. Yeah. In uh, 2019, a uh, huge accomplishment for you winning the SoCan Award, SoCan Award sorry, for a most performed country song. Uh, who's going to love you? What was the feeling of receiving that? That was cool. I mean, of all the songs I've written for other people, I've, I've never received the SoCan Award. So that was, that was pretty awesome to, uh, you know, to head up to Toronto and, uh, to accept that award in front of your peers. I mean, any, anytime you're, you're nominated for an award and your peers are voting you in, it's pretty cool. Um, it just, you know, it's one of those respect things, you know, when you get the respect of people that you um, also respect, uh, it's nice. So that was, that was cool. You've been actually killing it in country music uh, ever since with some, some of my favorite country songs in uh, Buzz Wears Off, Denim on Denim, Who's Gonna Love You, Good Jeans, and your newest, which I repeat numerous times in my car, happened on a Saturday night uh what what came into uh, writing those ones man i just uh i wish i had like a, a, a you know a, a process that i use every time i wish i had like the secret sauce man but i just i don't know i write a lot of songs you just don't hear the bad ones <laughs> i'm pretty good at weeding out the bad ones but i've also got some pretty awesome co-writers um my girl kelly archer who's from langley um who writes you know who's written so many hits i mean she had the number one single in the states a couple of weeks ago and um we did denim on denim and buzz together and um yeah it's just uh I, you know i work with a, with a lot of very talented people people that understand my process and the way i work and the way i write songs because i'm not the easiest person to, to work with you know i'm very meticulous and very slow um but i think at the end of the day that's why i get great songs because i really take my time and I don't rush and I think a lot of young writers they they just feel the need that you got to write a song a day or oh, oh that's good enough well you know I'm competing with the best in the world I live in Nashville and it's the best the best songwriters in the world live in that town and if I want to have another number one in the states then I got to outwrite those guys so um that's kind of just the work ethic that I that I put into it and that hard work pays off for sure sometimes yeah <laughs> your uh, your brand new music video just dropped uh, yesterday yeah, I'm excited about this one, man. Um, you know, my boy Dallas Smith kind of inspired me because uh, it's just, I felt like after this tour, you know, we did the Good Ones tour um, this past year, my first ever headlining tour across the country. You know, we played, uh, where are we playing in Vancouver? Um, what's that downtown venue? The, the famous one. Commodore. Commodore. Yeah, we played the Commodore. Um, and uh, it was just, just going across the country and playing the shows. I felt like I needed a little bit more energy in some of the songs. Um, not to say that we don't have up-tempo songs, we do, but you know what I mean? Like if you see a Dallas Smith show, it's yeah. got a ton of it. And I just felt we were lacking that a little bit. So I wanted to go into the studio and, and write some stuff that kind of felt like it could work in that lane and, and happen on a Saturday night hits pretty hard. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we're really big fans of Dallas Smith out here. Uh, pumps out songs, everyone's a hit, and he's been making hits for years, so. We're a big fan of him. That's pretty awesome that you got to go with him. 
Yeah, I mean that's the thing about Dallas, right? It's all about consistency. If you look at if you look at anyone who's become a star, like a bona fide star in Canada, anyways. I mean him, um, Dean Brody. I mean you could throw Kissel in there. It's just about consistency. It's continual hits, and I feel I feel like I'm getting close to that. You know, we've had probably four top fives in a row and a number one, and you know, denim on denim is literally going to be platinum like tomorrow. Yeah. So. I feel like we're, uh, you know, we're getting, we're getting there. Absolutely. And in 2019, you're nominated album of the year for love a girl and nominated for record producer of the year for who's going to love you. That's huge, man. Uh, a couple of my favorite countries. Yeah. Are... Again. It's lagging. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. It was, it was just lagging. Go ahead. I was just saying that, yeah, the nominations are great. You know, um, if you win or not to me it's just like whatever you know it's just being nominated and it just shows you that you know it shows me that what i'm doing is is the right thing and we're on the right path a couple of my favorite artists i'm just curious if you ever met them or worked with them uh luke combs megan patrick jojo mason aaron goodwin and willie nelson everybody but willie i have i have hung out with and no um yeah i actually played uh i played a couple shows with luke we were over in um germany and the UK right before this whole um, COVID situation happened. I literally almost got stuck in the UK um, because I was over there playing some shows. So, yeah, that was fun. I'm like a massive, massive, massive Luke Holmes fan. Uh, What's he like uh, off the stage? Great guy. Like, so humble, man. I mean, you know, he stayed at the Holiday Inn Express where we stayed in in Berlin. You know, I mean, he's he's not pretentious at all, man. He's just a good guy. Would you, would you be able to have a beer with the guy? Like right now? Oh, like maybe not this minute, but if you ran into him outside, like is he humble off the stage? Oh, yeah, man. Super humble. Yeah. I mean, most country artists are, though. I mean, I can't yeah. – like, I, I honestly cannot think of one country artist that wouldn't stop to meet someone, you know, if they came up to him at a restaurant. I, just, I can't think of any. Good. That's good to see. Don't see that really from the sports people. No, there's just a certain, certain humility about country artists for whatever reason. You know, I think, I think that's the reason why a lot of these artists become stars because they're so down to earth. Keith Urban, Kenny Chesney, I mean, these guys are like really down to earth, um, which is great because people relate to that. What's your uh, favorite sports team? And don't say the Maple Leafs. <laughs> Raptors? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a, pretty, I'm a pretty big Leafs fan. I just want one cup before I die. So hopefully I got a couple more years left. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, us, us too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It. I think we're getting closer, though. You know, we're getting closer. We'll see. We're going to be trading you Tanuv, I think. We'll give you – you guys need a defense. <laughs> the problem you is we don't have a – the problem. Like, we've spent, like, $50 million on our forwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no- I know. Crazy. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, ho- crazy. we're hoping to send you one because we got an extra D, man. We can give you – yeah, we'll we'll trade them. You guys can we'll give you some prospects. Yeah. <laughs> Who in the music industry helped you get your foot in the door? Um, let's see. You know what, Emerson Drive, they've been great, man. They they've become some of my best friends. Those guys are great. And then I said Danik, you know, the guitar player is my producer. Um, they were great, man. They took me on a tour. This has got to be seven or eight years ago, right when I had released like one song and. Um, not only did they give me an opening slot on their tour, but they let me ride with them on their tour bus. Um, so, I mean, I, I try to do that as well. I try to give back just like they gave to me. You know, we had Andrew Hyatt. Well, I was out on the Tim Hicks tour, actually. So, you know, Tim had his own bus. I had my bus. And then Andrew Hyatt is still a, a new artist. And, you know, he couldn't afford a bus. So I'm like, dude, why don't you just roll with us? Um, no use in you driving 400 miles, you know, between shows. So just, just roll with us. So he did. Right on. Yeah, that was a great concert. That was awesome. All three of you guys just killed it. That was a lot it was of fun. fun. Uh, what were we finding in your playlist? Uh, man, right now, not a lot. I'm kind of just like, I, you know, I, I was working really hard before. I'm in Canada right now. And if you, I'm, in, I'm in quarantine. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like day of my quarantine here at a friend's house in Ontario. Um, but right before I got up here, I mean, I was literally in the studio every day just trying to finish up this record because I think the album comes out in September. So we are just trying to get that done. And um, 
So I'm like really tired of music <laughs> right now. So I'm not really listening to too much. I'm playing like a ton of Xbox, ton of FIFA. Okay, FIFA. You play any yeah. magic? Uh, I do, but I left here. Okay, I'll give you the, I'll give you the story. Okay. So when we finished, ones tour the tour wrapped up in montreal and i was for whatever reason i was in a hurry to get out of there it was the last day of tour i hadn't been home in like a month so I, but i left my xbox on the bus so i realized this at the airport and then my bass player um randy ended up taking it home with him to london so he's had it for like six months in his house and I had my xbox so um i was able to get it back he had it shipped out to me but then i forgot to bring all my games to Canada. So all I've got with me are the FIFA the FIFA game that was in the Xbox. So I've been crushing the FIFA game like, you know, seven hours a day for the past eight or nine days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you, do you play any fantasy sports? Uh, no, not really. No, huh? I, I've really gotten into that. I don't know why. I just, I don't know, man. I got two kids. I think I'm just too busy. Yeah. Kids and making albums and hits. Well, yeah, trying to make hits, yeah. Uh, you are. Oh, man, you're killing it. What do you mean? Give yourself some credit. <clears throat> no, but you know what? There's a long way to go, man. I, I appreciate when people say that, you know, that we're in a good place and I've had success, and I have, but, you know, I haven't been able to sell out an arena like Dallas and Dean did. So I still got a hell of a long way to go. That's the way I look at it. I'm not going to sit back on my laurels because I've had a few hits. Well, kind of a bummer that your tour got canceled, though, this year too, eh? Obviously with the COVID. Yeah, well, we're we finished the tour, but then we were over in the UK, oh, and okay. that's where that's where it got canceled. So yeah, were you not supposed to go more stops in the, in uh, in the, Europe? No, okay. Yeah, no, we were. Yeah, we were supposed to do more stops. Okay, but that uh, that had to can yeah, that got canceled. You know, we're in Berlin doing that, and then uh, yeah, we almost got almost got stuck in the UK. How crazy was it down there? Like, I know here, like, people were going nuts. Like, was it crazy, crazy down there, too? Like, everyone masked up and gloved up and lots of toilet paper? Um, yeah, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic, though. So, things were – people were very – they didn't really understand what was going on. And I heard that the U.S. was going to close the border. So, we're over in the U.K., and, and I wasn't sure if I was going to get stranded or what. I mean – I, I showed up at the airport. I changed my flight, showed up at the airport at nine in the morning. And there's a direct, there's one direct flight from London to the, to, uh, to Nashville. <laughs> and I was booked on that flight, turned up at the airport and the security, not security, the, the gate agent is like, we, we can't let you on this flight, sir. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The flight leaves in like two hours. And that morning the president had changed some kind of protocol saying that you cannot fly directly to Nashville because Nashville didn't have any testing for, for um, uh, like, screening at the airport because they were screening people as they came back into the U.S., right? So I had to get diverted, and the person at the uh, airport in London is like, well, we can fly you to L.A. I'm like, have you guys ever been to America? Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's nowhere near Nashville. <laughs> but uh, we made it. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, what was the favorite song you've ever been a part of? Oh, my goodness. Um, that's a hard one, man. I mean, songs are like your babies, right? But um, yeah. the impact that it had denim on denim, because okay. um, that's why you write songs so they can connect with people. And for whatever reason, people just love that record. Um, but then, you know, I wrote a song called They Don't Know About Us for One Direction. And that was really cool because I got to fly to London and work with the guys and be in the studio with them. And so that was really cool. So uh, what next question I got for you would be, what would be your personal highlight or low light? Um, personal highlight, uh, probably who's going to love you going number one uh, as an artist. That was, that was amazing. Um, you know, on the songwriting side of things, having the number one on the billboard charts in the U S I mean, that's something that having Canadian number ones is amazing, but you know, to have a billboard number one in the States is pretty pretty hard to do so um i've done it they can never take it away from me yeah <laughs> and, uh, that was pretty cool how long till they send you the plaques i got the plaques oh you I got, got them the plaques too <laughs> oh. what's your uh dream musical event or yeah what's your dream musical venue to perform in oh man um that's a tough one. You know, any, uh, I think the first time that I, if I ever get to headline an arena, I think that'll be 
that'll be pretty epic because that's the pinnacle of your, you know, of, of most people's careers, being able to go into an arena as a headliner. So hopefully that will happen. Um, so yeah, something like that. What, uh, or what others dead or alive would you choose to perform with? Uh, wow. Um, I'm not sure about performing, but just writing songs. I would love to hear Kenny Chesney sing one of my songs or Tim McGraw just because I'm such big fans of theirs. Um, I'd also love to work with Adam Levine from Maroon 5. Yeah. Because he's talented. Uh, yeah. So people like that. Yeah. Do you listen to your, any of your old songs? No. Like, no. Well, yeah. See, a lot of the music people that I interview, and then I was the same way. Once you listen to it, you make it, make it, make it, you move forward. You don't go backwards. And... I, don't, I don't even listen to my new stuff. Yeah. Because by the time you hear it, I've heard that song a thousand times. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, sung it and recorded it and tweaked it and edited it. And, and it's just like, it, it's, it's, it's a lot. So it's very, it's very hard to remove yourself from the songs and to kind of hear, hear songs um, like a fan listens to them. Uh, so I, I just, I don't even listen to my own stuff. No, yeah, that's how I used to be too. I, I critiqued and crit like made it perfect. And then you, you've spent so much time listening to it, like you said, thousands of times over, and you're listening to every second, every word you say, clipping any, even with the podcast, I've been telling Mike that when you're, when you're editing and going through Pro Tools, having to edit all the audio, like it's, yeah. you, you've heard this interview a hundred times and you're just done with it, right? Yeah. So I, you know, I definitely don't listen to my stuff. If it comes on, I just, uh, I grin and bear it, you know, but um, yeah, it's hard for me to remove myself. Hey, Tabe, I just want to thank you so much, man, for coming on today. Like, you honestly, it meant a lot to us. We really appreciate it. It's got, no problem. No problem at all. Sorry about yesterday. Oh, it's all good. Hey, that's all good. We appreciate it. This guy is a super fan, man. He talks about you all the time. Awesome. Well, um, um, guys, I, I appreciate it. I really do. And, you know, next time I come through the Vancouver area, just holler at me, send me a message, and we'll get together, and I'll bring you out on the bus and stuff and just to grab some beer. Sure, oh, we love, buddy, we we really love you. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much, David, man. Appreciate it. I'll hit you on Instagram. Thank you very much. And uh, Thanks. If, yeah, if there's any, uh, if there's any links yes. or any like uh, links or your music video, if you can send it to me, I'm gonna add it to the video, if possible. Yeah, I'll send it. I'll send it to you tonight. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate okay, it. Thank you, guys. Be safe out there. Hey, you, you too. too.